We now come to the study of motion in a vertical direction under the influence of the acceleration due to gravity. And on the Earth, we have a, sort of a complication called air resistance. We're going to ignore the effect of air resistance for our calculations. Experimentally, we would have to go to a location where there is no air resistance. Well, the moon provides that. So, uh, 1971, an astronaut uh, and several astronauts have walked on the moon, but an astronaut did this experiment on the moon, so-called Galileo's experiment, uh, dropping a hammer and a feather. They took a feather to the moon, and the geology hammer was useful for gathering rocks. Uh, but on the Earth, the object that's more dense has uh, less uh, effect on its motion due to air resistance, so the hammer drops rapidly, the feather floats to the ground, and they don't hit at the same time. That's due to air resistance. Without air resistance, the two objects, if they're dropped at the same time and dropped from the same height, will hit at the same time. So when we do uh, these uh, vertical motion problems, very often we'll switch the variable x out and replace it with y. y for the vertical direction. That's not a requirement. It's not always done, but uh, you may see that. Y is the vertical variable in many uh, examples. Um, on the Earth, the acceleration due to gravity is minus 9.8 meters per second squared, taking up to be the positive direction. On the Moon, acceleration due to gravity is minus 1.67 meters per second squared. So let's uh, go ahead and do an example. Uh, take a look at an example here. Let's suppose we start at ground level moving upward at 13 meters per second and acceleration due to gravity of the earth is present. Um, what's the maximum height? What's the time in the air? I'd like you to write down the variables with their values, write down the symbols with their values. You need to assume some, uh, some values and see if you can pick a proper equation to calculate first the height in the air, maximum height. So you should pause and do that. Okay, here's uh, what I wrote down for a few of the values. We can assume, starting at ground level, x naught is zero. At the start of the problem, x position is zero. And again, I'm using x vertically instead of y. But uh, we're working a vertical problem. At the top of the motion, when the object doesn't go any higher, the velocity at that instant is zero. The final x we're looking for, the t we're looking for, we were given a of minus 9.8. I didn't write it up here. Uh, but if you look at equation 4, it does not have the time variable. It does have the x, but there's only one unknown here. The velocity at the top is 0. We had 13 for v naught. We have minus 9.8 for the a value. So we can calculate here the maximum height. I got 8.62 meters. You should uh, verify that. For the time in the air, that's going up and coming down. The motion is symmetrical. So what we should do is calculate the time to the top of the motion, multiply that by 2, and we'll get time in the air. Um, so if I pick equation 1, again at the top of the motion, the velocity is 0. We start at 13 meters per second. Acceleration is minus 9.8. We can calculate the time to go up. I have 1.3265. We double that and we get uh, 2.65 seconds would be the time in the air for this motion. Here would be a graph of the motion, so the uh, position uh, and this particular one we're going into a hole or something, but uh, we go up and we come down. The problem I did stopped back at ground level. Um, in terms of the velocity, why is there a negative slope here? The velocity uh, starts off positive 13, goes to zero, and then becomes negative. It's a negative slope because the acceleration is negative. And right here, what, what's uh, happening at this part of the motion when the velocity is zero? We're at the top of the motion. We're at the top of the motion. And coming down, the velocity is a negative. We're headed towards the ground. The acceleration is always minus 
a constant acceleration, so we're allowed to use the uh, kinematic equations. Um, we throw up, we come down, we throw the object upwards, we, uh, the object comes downward, and if we you know, if it fudge just a little bit or our hand is over the edge of the cliff, we throw it up and the object comes down. Um, you should observe here the symmetry of the motion. Object goes up and comes down. When it's at this level of the motion, the velocity is just a negative of the same number of the launch velocity. And in doing the calculations, if we had two people here, and person one throws the object up and it comes down, and person two launches an object downward with the uh, same velocity magnitude, but with a negative sign, these two objects would track each other. They would hit the ground eventually at the bottom here at the same time. Um, you know, X number of meters below this red line, they would both have the same velocity. So there's symmetry here. And calculations here of, um, again, the y position being illustrated, the print's a little bit small, but um, perhaps your instructor will do some examples uh, that would show the uh, positions and velocities of a metal ball. Metal ball is nice and dense, so air resistance is negligible. And uh, again, we have this situation that the uh, Y position um, you know, tracks along here. This one just headed downwards, released from rest, and uh, the Y being a negative number towards the ground. The Y velocity negative because the acceleration is um, giving us that negative trend in velocities, a negative step every second. Uh, starting from zero, acceleration gives us negative velocities after that. But we have here what's called free fall motion. Motion uh, vertically downward and no air resistance uh, being allowed to influence our, our thinking on this. Um, I might make a comment about uh, section 8, the graphical analysis uh, in chapter 2 for my particular course. We're not going to focus on this much, but you should read this over and ask me if you have some questions. Um, just this section does try to help you use graphs to analyze motion. And important feature here is that the, uh, the slope of the position graph versus time gives us velocity. The slope on the velocity versus time graph yields acceleration. Um, we won't do the more advanced uh, work of the area under the curve gives us the displacement, um, but we will talk about the slopes on the position graph and on the velocity graph uh, yielding the next graph. So we're going to stop here. Um, look for an example problem.